It flew to Ireland's west coast to check on reports of German U-boats refueling off Ireland and to the Dutch and Belgian ports to test the presence or otherwise there of boom defences. Ended up staying in the States for 82 years. It was then bought by fighter... The interior of this aircraft is gorgeous looking at the exterior. Again, superb job done on it. But the Hawker Nimrod gets airborne. It turns the third aircraft in this slot. The Hawker Nimrod 1. came up with when the fleet air arm needed a faster and more capable carrier-borne fighter to replace the old fairy flycatcher. The origins of this design are in the lab-based Fury, but really it's a very much different machine. It's got greater span wings, and crucially for its carrier-borne role, it has flotation boxes in the wings and fuselage. Nimrods were produced. The first 42 were Mark 1s like this. They entered service in late 1931. The Mark 2, of which we've also got an example based here at Duxford with the historic aircraft collection. Quite different with the rest of gear, swept back wings, a different cooling system, a tail wheel rather than a tail skid, a gas start system, and a more powerful version of the glorious sounding Rolls-Royce Kestrel engine. of the fleet air arm flew the Swordfish 800, which was based on HMS Courageous, 801 on Furious, and 802 on Glorious. It's interesting to note that the fleet air arm organisationally at that part of the, that point of the 1930s was part of the RAF still. It wasn't transferred to Admiralty control until 1939. Armament comes in the form of a couple of forward-firing Vickers machine guns. It could also carry four 20-pound bombs on underwing positions. the Hawker plant at Kingston-upon-Thames in Surrey. It was delivered to what was then 408 Fleet Fighter Flight, embarked in HMS Glorious, which later became 802 Squadron. And it is an amazing survivor, this. The remains of the aircraft ended up in a scrapyard in Hounslow and were donated to the RAF Museum. Aero Vintage bought them and embarked on a restoration in 1994 made its maiden flight in 2000. Pete Kinsey then, landing on with the 